Hey guys, this is part five of the Unmasking NK series. We have had quite a few requests to make additional episodes of this series and even kind of some specific requests on specific information. So we feel strongly about the content that we put out. We feel strongly about this topic in particular, and so we will most likely be making some additional episodes. I wanna talk about two things that came up while I was making part five. When I was editing and putting this video together last week, I got some new information I wasn't expecting from a source, and it's information that I haven't heard reported on before. I also decided to wait on the oxygen special to air, and I'm glad that I did. And as most of you know, this is the fifth interview that NK has done, and she does it down at the CBI office in Lakewood, Colorado. And this is the first video recorded interview that we have. And I know one of my biggest comments I get on these is people love when I put the commentary up when she's talking, and I will do that through some of this. However, in some of these clips, I'm going to have just her, just the video, because I think it's important to see body language and just because this is the first video where we're able to see her interacting with the agents. I feel like I have to say this at the beginning of every single video. So if you're wondering why I always say this, there is a reason because there will inevitably be comments saying that we are doing this exact thing. I've stopped answering them because we're not, but nowhere in this series will you hear me accuse her of anything. We use cell phone records, GPS, and we're doing live commentary and interviews that we're listening to. We're analyzing this information and we're inserting our personal opinions. It doesn't mean that they're right. It just means there are opinions based on our research and it doesn't mean that we're accusing her. We aren't. At the end of the day, we don't know. We know what our opinions and our thoughts are. We know that there are differing opinions and thoughts on this and that the topic of her is very polarizing. We understand that. And this goes for both sides, but at the end of the day, the only people that know what really happened that are still alive to talk about it are Chris and NK. The video starts out with Agent Kobach walking her into an interview room and leaving her there while he goes to do something. She's attempting to transfer contacts over. I've probably watched too much First 48, but I imagine them all huddled up in a separate room studying her behavior while she's in there messing with her phone. A lot of people have mentioned what she wore that day with the jeans and the long sleeve jacket being strange as it was August. Since I've heard this so many times when this interview is discussed, I figured I'd look up what the temperature was that day. And as you can see on August 23rd of 2018, it wasn't terribly hot like it can be in August in Colorado. We can easily get over 100 but it was almost 90 degrees. When Agent Kobach comes back into the room, NK again begins the interview with a very sad, depressed mood. She then flips into an almost flirtatious tone, in my opinion. She appears to communicate with men in this damsel in distress type of manner. Watch how her demeanor changes when Agents Tammy Lee and Stacy Galbraith enter the room. Standing here, subject to recording, just so you know. Okay. And you said on your text that you might have remembered some more stuff. Yeah, so let's do our phones first. Um, I need to... They gave me a piece of paper to transfer my contacts. Wouldn't do it for me, but... You should be able to just put them on the iCloud. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> they said to follow this app. I can't even find the app store on this phone. Is it uh, Android? Yeah. So strange. I um I tried to transfer all the stuff from this phone to this phone last night and started thinking up like old text, like stuff I don't even have saved in here. Or any of them from Chris? Yeah, a few, but not many. It's pretty short. There's like ten or twelve and there's like a few from those days, but most of it is Hi. Hello. Tammy. I'm Stacy Galbraith. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? All right. Getting through it? Trying. Yeah. Stressing out. Stressing out. Yeah, you look stressed out. <laughs> Did you get some therapy figured out? I'm waiting for you guys to get back to me on that, but I'm trying to. Yeah. Yeah. Does Hazel need to? Yeah, we're going to see if Hazel comes in. We're, so, Weld County is just. I had to write a letter yesterday <coughs> for Weld County to approve. Uh, to pay for her treatment. Oh. And then it's got to go through a board because it's 
kind of unusual. Yeah. Uh, since she's not an eyewitness. Right. But uh, it sounded like there was not going to be any opposition to it. It's just a process. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So it's, when you go through the text messages, Tammy and probably Stacy will be there. Okay. So you guys know each other. Okay. Um, or if they reach out to you, you know that they're not the media. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give me your card? Yeah. Really yeah. Like I got you one. Okay. I just Thank now you. with this new phone, it's like I got so many numbers that I I'm sure I can figure so out who they are. I need to just deal with that. Like, if you guys can help me get all of my contacts from this phone. So I can get a tech guy maybe to help help me because well, I'm bad at it too. Give me instructions. So on. this is your old phone. This is the one that I use for communication. This is the one that's going to be good. Okay. This one's mine. This is nicer. I know. <laughs> iPhones suck. I'm kind of relieved to have this back. Okay. So you're gonna you want to move contacts from there to there. That's all I want to do. Once you guys do that, then you guys can have this phone. I mean, he gave me uh, a way to do it, so I think I need to connect to Wi-Fi, and then I need to download this app, and then I think once I download it, I can sync it up, and I need to just download the app on both phones. So let me get a guy who knows about Wi-Fi. Is your password still 653038? Yeah, that hasn't changed. So that's going to be that one. And which which one is getting all the new text messages? Your new phone? Mm -hmm. I only got a few, and they're like, now I get what you're saying. Like, they're out of order, they're scrambled, they're missing. They don't make sense. I got super excited when I saw them because I was like, maybe it'll be all of them, but it's not. So, <clears throat> maybe what I'll ask, we have a device that maybe we can download that too. This one too? Mm -hmm. Alright. I mean, I don't know if that'll work, but we can try it. Here's, Here's mine. Thank you for Thank you. Thank you. So even though this is now the fifth interview and Agent Kobeck has explained in detail many times why they need the contents of her phone, she still continues to question them and be difficult about providing them with what they're asking for. She's done a great job of getting rid of most of the text between she and Chris and the ones that they do have, a lot of them are scrambled and have the wrong dates and confusing. And despite her many apologies, apologizing for the fact that they don't have these and they need them, she continues her non-cooperative tone by refusing to provide them with her Google password. They ask her numerous times, and she tells them she's normally really good with passwords, but in this instance, she can't remember it. Therefore, they have more difficulties trying to use Celebrite and getting info extracted in this interview as well. The familiar dance between Agent Kobach and NK continues where she tries to go off on irrelevant tangents and he tries to rein her back in. In my opinion, he sounds more annoyed in this interview than any of the previous ones. I also think he's a little more aggressive with her than he has been previously. And I use that term loosely, of course, because in my opinion, they have been incredibly soft on her, shockingly so, especially with some of the you know, things that don't add up that you know that they've noticed. But in these next two parts, at least, he does address at least one of the things that I think is a huge red flag. There's a couple points in this interview that no matter what was ever said, I just don't think I could be convinced that there's not more to this story. And as I play the clip for you and let you know what that is, you can let me know in the comments what you think, but we're about to listen to one of them. So your phone this time, do you have any objections to us looking at everything in your phone? Why do you even need that? I'm just curious. Like, why do you need everything as opposed to stuff? So when, well, because it's easier to get it. And we, if we're looking at all the material, let's say I take everything off your phone, I can put a date in, like let's say August 10th through the 15th, because those are critical days. Uh -huh. But other conversations between you and Chris or other text messages between you and Chris from uh, June or July, then it makes it harder for me to find all those. Do you understand what I mean? It's easier well, for them to just take number, everything. Right? I don't know. Are they? Yeah. I mean, except for when I first met him, and it was his APC thing. Okay. And but then what about uh, your phone log? It's always his 9M0 yeah, number. number. All the time. Right. Like it's and always that we, one, or originally it was his. We phone talked about phone. your GPS uh, locating, like knowing where your phone is yeah. at certain times. I mean, you guys can have all that. I just was like, oh my God, I have so many texts on here between me and all my friends. I'm like, do they really want all this stuff? Well, is there anything in those texts that you'd be concerned with? Not really. So, 
Well, not really or yes or no? No, I mean, like, I the other day, my dad and I just had to do some damage control because a lot of people were like, hey, please call me, I don't know what to say, and I just told them all, like, I didn't say anything. I pretty much just said, if mediators contact you, tell them no comment. It's like, please be nice to them. Like, you do not need to talk to them. It was like, I'm safe, I'm not in trouble, I'm in breaking laws, and I was just like, just send your love and support, and that was all I said to people. So did that prompt all the phone calls of people going, no, are you okay? they were prompting me. Right. That is why I did that, because I didn't even want to like say that, but I was getting all sorts of texts from people that were like, media is trying to contact me, I don't know what to do. I didn't tell them that I was a witness, I didn't tell them anything about that. It was just like, just say no comment, I need you to do this. Okay. And then a couple of my like super super close friends, I asked them if they would be courteous enough to take all the pictures that we had of each other off Facebook and social media, and they said yes. And that was like a couple of really close friends. Is there any text messages between you and friends that reference anything that would be concerning regarding this case? No. Like talking about Chris. I think you've told me that you've never even really talked with my friends about him. No, and like my friend's dad died last night, like yesterday. I'm not worried about that. No, I know, but she started like, oh my god, she was really drunk last night. She started like freaking out. She's like, I don't know what's going on in your life. She's like, I don't know if it pertains to this case. And she like just sent me like a screenshot of a news article of that case. And she was just like, She's like, what about conversation? I, I didn't mention that it had anything to do with that. She's like, I don't know if that's what it is. He works in the dark ghost. She's like, I really don't give a shit. She's like, I just really need you to be here with me and my dad and this and this and this. And she was just kind of upset because I had asked her um, to please say no comments in the media. And it happened to be like right when her dad died. And I think she was feeling a little like... Yeah, but I mean, you guys can read this. There's nothing in there of me actually saying anything about it. I just pulled What's your phone number on that phone? 720. It's the same phone number that's on this one. 6569605. So, no. I mean, you guys can you guys can watch So, this. between... There was a conversation that I asked you about between you and Charlotte, too. That's the same girl. That same girl who was freaking out. Yeah. So, was there ever a conversation about kids with you and Charlotte? Like, you... I can't remember the exact context, but I guess we're talking. I was hanging out with a guy who had kids. Okay. And um, what? She has not even like. Put okay. All right. Any so your conversation them. about him having kids, how did that go? I mean, I don't know. I just told her. She, uh, is he it still? So, did you delete yeah, that, yeah, or is no, it still? No, no, no. I have no. I, I have no reason to delete anything else on my phone. Okay. And the reason I deleted all this stuff with Chris is because. He was making me feel really uncomfortable, and I didn't want to see it in my phone anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, let me scroll all the way back here. We're going to scroll talk a lot. No, she's like... So let's just, while we're here, because we talked about this before, but we didn't talk about the specific context of what that message said regarding the children. So obviously, in the situation that we're looking at now with uh, the death of two children and all the other circumstantial stuff going around in the case. It, you, I just want to make sure there was no comments ever made by you regarding, you know, children or dislike of children or love of children. Either way. Do you, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I guess. Let me find it. Uh, I think this is where this starts. You guys can just take whatever you want. So, it, it's easier for me to just take everything than it is to single it out. Plus, for the purposes of this case, the less exposure, you know, we're, we already have, uh, initially, you drew concern from me when you told me you deleted everything from Chris. I've already told you that. You understand why? There's no question as to why that might cause concern. So if there's anything else that ever comes up, I have it, and then we can just discuss it. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right. That's right here. This is where it starts. <coughs> she starts right there. She starts 
was talking about her and her fiance. So that was like weeks ago. And she hasn't brought it up since really or like connected the dots or like said shit. I mean you guys can look through all those texts. definitely when things were going good so this is like weeks prior I'm just assuming I think the day is at the top of whenever we started texting that day okay. looks this is we talk a lot August 7th yeah so I re reference everything to Sunday the So that's the only conversation like that on there, I believe, on my phone. I don't think there's like anything else. And she even last night like still wasn't even. She's so worried about her dad. Yeah, and I think it's obvious by now that some type of agreement was made where if she didn't lawyer up, they would play nice with her. I can't think of any other reason why they would only go back to June with her texts and phone calls. It makes no sense and why would they ever take her word on anything? The only reason that I can think of or what I like to tell myself anyways is that at the beginning they thought it was smarter to just have her cooperation and play nice with her and go after Chris because Chris is the big fish they wanted and then you know they got him to plead guilty. They avoided a huge trial and a huge expense for the community. And then they figured they could go back and review everything, which is kind of what he says in that voice clip, that they just want everything so that if there's something down the road that they find, they can go back and ask her about it or look into it deeper. So I'm thinking maybe that's what, why the trip in February to talk to him. And maybe this is the part where, okay, he's gone and everything's wrapped up. And they went back to maybe look at a lot of these loose ends and things that didn't make sense at the time. Looking back with what we know now, it seems like a huge oversight with the unexplained Google searches that NK deleted. It's things like that that create the nonstop speculation from the public. I was thinking about this the other night while I was working on a different NK video. And during the press conference, D.A. Rourke complained about social media and basically how it makes it nearly impossible to track back some of the rumors and verify facts because you really don't know when it started and people don't even know that they're interviewing where exactly things started. I can see in this case how it could hurt things, but it's also a fact, whether they like it or not, that many times social media gets facts that they don't have. We don't have to follow the same procedures that they do, and we have direct access to people involved or in the know about the case. A great example of this is when a reporter during the press conference asked Rourke about the letter that Chris wrote when he was at his parents' house. And of course, I had heard about it, so when I was sitting there listening to the press conference, I was like, well, this will be interesting to hear his take on it. And he kind of looked around and smirked and laughed and said that it... They didn't know about it and that it didn't exist and took some swipes at social media. But we know that it does exist and it, here it is. My point is just that, you know, every single video we do, we get the comments and I see it in all the groups and stuff like that. Why don't you guys stop talking about the case? Just let it go. I've always found that a ridiculous comment for a couple of reasons. First of all, no one's ever going to stop talking about this case. They're just not. No one's ever stopped talking about John Bonet or... Lacey and Scott Peterson or Jody Arias. And this is one of those huge cases like that. People are always going to talk about it. And the way that this was handled with the open-ended questions and all of these weird coincidences that um, don't seem like coincidences, it's a very mysterious case. There's still a lot of unanswered questions. And it's human nature for people because it doesn't feel finished, like I said in part four, to keep digging for answers and keep talking about it and speculating. And they kind of created the beast by the way they handled it. So you can't really have it both so ways. So in this segment of the interview you just listened to, Agent Kobach is telling 
NK that there's some text between her and Charlotte that have been brought to his attention by Agent Tammy Lee and that have caused some concern. And she, of course, denies that they mean anything and whether or not, you know, it's hard to tell whether she's not picking up what he, where he's going with this. I think that she is. She's just not really acknowledging it. And he references text between them on 8-7 and you can hear him quietly confirm out loud that the date she's talking to Charlotte about Chris being quote unquote all about his kids and the fact that he's already done everything already with Shanann and all of this kind of introducing um, Charlotte to Chris and he whispers 8-12 which is as we know the day before the murders. A lot of people in social media world in the groups think that these texts between NK and Charlotte on 812 sound contrived. So whether or not you feel that way as well, the date on these is huge. It obviously caught the attention and suspicion of investigators as well, yet it seemingly ends up going nowhere. And it just so happens she talks to Charlotte about Chris the day before the murders, yet another coincidence, I suppose. In addition to that, the content of the texts themselves is strange. She's acting like she barely knows Chris. Meanwhile, they've been planning a future together. She's been looking at wedding dresses. They're obviously much more serious, and she's acting like this is guy that she barely knows that she just met, and this is allegedly her best friend who she says she talks to all the time. What do you mean by can tell he has a lot to take care of in life? What did you mean when you said that? He has a mortgage and he has kids. Okay. Responsibilities. I mean, he's a father of a house. You're even saying in here he's all about his kids. Yeah. And she was like, ask me somewhere in there, like, I mean, everything I had to say about him at that point was, like, really positive. Like, I think I made it clear that I wasn't, like, 100% sure this was, like, the man of my dreams and I was going to spend the rest of my life with him or anything, but I was enjoying the time that I was spending with him at that point. You're referencing that he has two kids and then <clears throat> you don't like that? Um because you want to have that experience with somebody else? Is that what I just thought was? I wasn't sure if he was the one that I wanted to be with because he had already like done everything. Okay. Like I was like, it would be really nice to kind of like have kids and have my own marriage and all of that stuff. So that was never anything I compared to him. She said, you said he's handsome, huh? Did you send her a picture? Mm-hmm. And that's not attached here? Mm -hmm. Is that because what you did, do you think from what you deleted? I think it's from when I deleted all my <coughs> photos of his stuff. He's kind of short. I mean, I talked to her in a way that I wouldn't, like, talk to him as, like, my girl, you know what I'm saying? It's I get it. No, I'm, just, very, I'm like, just teasing you a little bit. She so brought it up again last night, but she didn't brought like up what? Chris? Case, but she didn't like connect the dots. She was like freaking out like her dad just died. And she was really was upset. She wanted me to come see her on Saturday because it's his wedding. So unexpected. Kind of sort of. Mm -hmm. He had Parkinson's. 
so kind of, but not. You know what I'm saying? It was mm-hmm. a very drawn out thing. Um, but she's having a really hard time with it. I knew she would. And she just like, she's like, can you make the wake on Saturday? And I was like, I'm really going to leave the house. And I didn't tell her that, but I was like, I don't know. I'm, I'll try. And I'm going to go, but I'm not going to tell her until it's like right before I have to be there. And she so what did you reference that? Just is Chris the guy? I'm, I'm more interested No, she in didn't even ask me if she was just like, she's like, I don't know what's going on. She's like, oh, you can see it. <laughs> oh, okay. So oh, you mentioned what? on your text before you were coming that there was other information that you thought of that was important again? You know, she's all upset because I asked her to mm-hmm. not talk to the media and it happened to be the day that her dad died and I'm sitting here trying to comfort her. Is this your best friend? Yes. This girl is like my whole world. So if you listen to that whole clip, all that Agent Kobach is trying to do there, and it's that's why it's so frustrating, you want to pull your hair out, all that he wants to do there is just get information on these texts that Agent Tammy Lee and Agent Stacy Galbraith have brought to his attention that they found concerning. But by now we've learned her style and it's basically throw in so much random information and try to get them so far off track that they don't even remember where they started. That is what she does here. And it doesn't work. It worked a little bit at the beginning. It really doesn't work now because they've also learned her style. And you can hear in there Agent Kobach getting frustrated. He's not nearly as patient. He has no problem interrupting her, redirecting her, and just stopping her in her tracks because it's a huge waste of his time. And you can tell it's deliberate. So in this next clip that I'm going to play for you, this is the other really big thing that I think is extremely important that for whatever reason I didn't pay that much attention to before. So when we start this clip, she's in there with the tech guy and Agent Kobach. And the tech guy is in there because she has an Android that she hasn't had in two years and she doesn't know how to get onto the Google App Store. And if my three-year-old knew how to order $300 worth of Tangled on direct TV when I didn't even know she knew the code, I'm pretty sure that NK could figure out how to connect to the Google App Store. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there were a couple things that convince us without a doubt that we're on the right track. You could remove 90% of everything we've brought up in these interviews, and just this one thing alone has us convinced. She tells Agent Kobach that she has this important information she has to tell him, And it turns out to be telling him that Chris wanted to save money on cable and so he got a fire stick. There is absolutely no reason for her to bring this up unless she's just fishing to see what investigators know. The fire stick meeting for us has always been a weird piece of the puzzle. There's something missing here. I just, I don't know what it is, but it seems to us that Chris used Troy as some type of fire stick alibi since the call about the leak at Survey 319 was timed perfectly to come in as he was standing there to volunteer to go in early and fix it on Monday morning. After she tells him about it, he literally asks her, why are you telling me this information? Because it doesn't make any sense. It only makes sense that she's nervous about it. She doesn't know what they found in their investigation yet because it's only been 10 days out from the murders, and she doesn't know what Chris told them in his confession. But in our opinion, she wanted to know if they knew about it and she wanted to step in front of it because it means premeditation. In fact, you're about to hear in the clip coming up that the fire stick was discussed at their Saturday night date at Lazy Dog. It's possible the topic of the fire stick exchange came up at dinner and maybe an opportunity presented itself and that's what he meant by had he only gone to the Rockies game that night instead. And quick side note, just because it was distracting and obvious to me, but when the clip verse starts, listen to, if you're not watching and just listening, listen to the very first interaction she has with the two male agents, the tech guy and Agent Kobach, and the stark contrast it has with when she deals with Hazel, the victim's advocate, in a few minutes. It reminds me of the voicemails. It almost has this strange little girl whiny quality to it. So are your contacts on this phone synced to the cloud, to the iCloud? I don't know. Okay. 
I mean, some messages came over, so I assume that everything is, but I don't really know. So maybe I'm not as happy as I thought. What'd you remember? You just said you remember something besides that. Were you oh, you want to have a conversation right now? He's an agent. He okay. works with me. He he knows about the I can too. step out if you feel more comfortable. Oh it's, no, it's, I mean what I okay don't you, know, whatever. You, you know, tell me. He had a fire stick. He kept talking about you know what a fire stick is. No. Okay, you probably do since you're a tech guy. They're like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, you mean like Amazon Fire Stick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so he didn't have it in his possession, but Who's on Saturday... Who's Chris? Yes. So Chris mentioned to me that on Saturday, that same day, um, that... Oh, because this kind of went hand in hand with the whole, like, apartment talk, because I was like... Oh, that apartment that he said he found, that uh, he was like... I was like, well, what's it called? And he's like, I don't remember. And I was like, well, how much is it? He's like, it's close to 1100 And I was really taken back by that because I pay more than that. And I don't really have that nice of a place. And it's not a two-bedroom. It's a one. So that part kind of seemed odd to me. But I'd seen a few things online that were kind of cheap. And I was just like, all right. And he's like, I'm just trying to cut costs. And I was like, that's cool. Was like, how else are you doing that? And it was just out of curiosity and he's like well I decided to get rid of cable and I was like okay and I was kind of taken back by that too because he loves sports he like lives and breathes football so I uh I was like okay and I was like that's a good cost to you know to cut back on and he was like yeah I think I can watch still stream sports via a fire stick and I've heard of those things before I don't really know a lot about them um but he was saying that he had a buddy working on it already for him who's the buddy he didn't say I didn't ask why do you think that's important that he had all that set up I don't know I mean it made me believe like, that, he that he was ready to move out is that Oh, I get what you're saying. Go. Yeah, like he was prepping. It still sounded like he was okay. prepping. I mean, everything he did sounded like he was getting ready for everything to happen. The only thing that I found really peculiar about the whole situation was the fact that he just kind of seemed disconnected about the apartment thing on Saturday, whereas in previous conversations, he was the one who brought it up, and he was the one who seemed really excited about it when I offered to help him do some like legwork on it. Trying to find him a spot for him and his girls. Right. I'll be right back. Okay. So I don't, I don't know who his friend was. It was just weird because sometimes it seemed like some of the things he said, he was still really. A lot of things he said made sense. It still to this day makes sense. And then other things that he said don't make sense at all to me anymore. She then tells Agent Kobach that she was fired from both Anadarko and Tasman Geosciences the day before on August 22nd. She's upset because she said that they lied and that they said they weren't going to fire her and that Anadarko had offered to pay her and Tasman said that they would not. And this is where one of the myths that we always hear in the case comes up that Weld County paid for her to get out of release. They talk about in this interview that Hazel, the victim's advocate, is helping her write a letter for them to let her out of her lease, not for them to pay for it. You're good. Don't worry about it. And they contacted me the day after and pretty much just let me go. And it's like, just be honest. I well, did he give you another, another job or another appointment? They would have had to have. And I kind of had a solution for that situation, too, but they didn't seem like they were all about it. It is what it is. I've only been working with them for like four months. They don't really know me that well. That's Tasman? She's also telling Agent Kobach that she's worried about job prospects in the future. She hopes she doesn't have to go back to living on an oil rig. And he tells her that maybe going back to work would be the best thing for her. And then she responds with that she's not quite ready. And again, this is on August 23rd, which is four days after she's Googled, do people hate Amber Fry and Amber Fry book deal? It seems to me that that may have been her idea to make money instead of going back to work. And I keep thinking that must have disgusted agents when they saw it. 
I still think that the Denver Post photos that go along with their article that don't look anything like her were for a possible book cover. They do look a lot like Amber Fry's book cover, just saying. But that is where her mind is at, and Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico are still a week out from being laid to rest. There's one last part that I think is worth putting in here, and it's at the end where she asks if she's going to get in trouble. And again, we're only 10 days out from the murder, and he can't really answer that question comprehensively or accurately, but he does the best that he can. And he's like, who do you work for? I have this skill, and I'd like to come to work for you. Just thinking about it, just thinking about reaching out to some old employers. I've always been a really good employee to those people. Everybody, when I leave, is pretty disappointed. This is the first time I've ever been terminated from a job. So. Sometimes that can be tough to get over, too. It's hard. This was like the dream job. I feel awful about all of this. Like, I wanted that for so long to get out of the oil field. I was so tired of living on oil rigs. It's such a rough life. I just want to be in the office and work in environmental for an oil company and I finally got it and all this happened. Well, you have that skill set now, so maybe you can move back in I hope so. We will see. Um, I forgot what else was in Are you guys... Am I in trouble because I deleted to sex? You're not in trouble. I didn't know what was going on at no. that point. So, <laughs> I know if... Is there a, does that cause questions? Of course, of course it does. It does. Uh, there is, but is it criminal? No. Is there concern that you're hiding something? Potentially. That's why I want them, or I wouldn't be asking for them. I know. And I'm you've been give up. You you've that. been upfront with me uh, about everything. I don't have. I don't have a concern that, that you know you ever told Chris. I don't want you. You know, go kill your wife. No. Or. I don't know. Get rid of your kids, or I don't want to date you if you have kids. None of those things no. ever came out of your mouth. We've talked about that. Yeah. So, but until those text messages that are deleted um, are there, you know, and all that, it's just speculation. But it, it's kind of like, eh, why did you do that? And I get your excuse. I understand what you're saying, that on Tuesday you re realized who this man was and what he had done. You didn't want him to be part of your life anymore, so you got rid of it. I didn't even want to see it in my phone. It was, like, freaking me out, because I remember I had, like, deleted them, and then he sent me another text, and then I deleted that one, too. Right. Because I was like, I don't want to deal with this. By the way, when you're looking through those texts, look for his ABC phone for that one conversation we had where he screenshotted me what he did on Monday. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you said, it, it, that's his Anna Darko phone. Uh huh. Okay. And that should be the only like recent. Like, there's probably stuff if you guys are able to pull it from way, way back that we talked, but nothing. <laughs> the thing we talked about was him proving that he went to the oil field. That he went to work. That he went to work that morning yes. at whatever site he was supposed to go to yeah. to check on the. So that'll be in there. Release. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Um. And then I don't know. Am I allowed to like address my friends and tell them please no comment to the media? I mean, I haven't been telling them anything else. I don't. Know. I would not talk with anybody about any of this case. Except, this I mean, I know you've talked. You need to talk to a, a therapist, and you need to talk. I'm sure you're talking to your dad. To he's some extent, probably I mean, your closest person. Not well, well. When he's not in here for this, I don't tell him about this. I tell him I'm coming down here, but he doesn't need to know anymore. He's you're an adult. You made some decisions that caught you in a bad situation. But there's nothing wrong with you talking to somebody. I just wouldn't go into details. No. I haven't even been telling people but I'm a witness for anything. Certainly your best friend. I mean, if I was you, I'd be confiding in my best friend like, hey, this is what's happening in my life and I need help. Is there anything wrong with that? No. I mean, that's about as far as confiding has gone was me telling her about some guy that I was hanging out with, but that was like way before any of this. Yeah, and you need support right now too. So you do, there is no, we're not, you're not in trouble. There's no charges against you. You're simply a witness. I just don't want to like get in trouble for like talking to like my dad or like about asking what? their friend for help. Well, I mean like well my dad already knows, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing to get in trouble for. Okay, I don't know how that works. That's why I'm asking. I'm yeah. like, I don't want there's, this is one more thing I don't need on my plate because I right. oh my god. You're not you're not um, in trouble. 
and talking to your friends and family about what's going on isn't going to get you in trouble. Okay. I don't even want to talk to my friends about it. I don't even want anybody to know. I mean, they're going to find out, but I figure the reason that I think I'm staking out from the media as long as I have been is because nobody knows anything. And because my inner circle is really awesome. Maybe. I don't know. They haven't even Or they that. just... Because you're not on social media? At all. But right. I mean, I eliminated all of that. Right. I, like, even had the ability to, like, go through. I went and found everybody I knew that had any public posts. And it was just like, this needs to be cleared. It's all gone. Right. So you've made it very difficult for them to find you. Do I think eventually that oh. at some point they are going to find you? Sure. Of course. I think they're going to find out where I'm staying at? I think that would be really tricky. I don't know. I, you haven't even told me where you're staying. So Nobody and knows. I don't know how it's connected to you or your family. So, I mean, if it's in your family's name, certainly it wouldn't be that hard to figure it out. So this so. leads me to the information that I was given while I was making this video. This person has asked me not to use their name and so I'm not going to, but this person is someone who has spoken to Chris numerous times since he's been incarcerated. So first thing, Chris verified himself that NK started working there in March of 2018. And I know a lot of people have April on the brain and that's fine I, I don't think it really matters chris says march the co-workers seem to think april or march she says four months which is april but it's all around the same time frame so basically it's end of march beginning of april when asked about the google searches that nk made i was told that chris seemed genuinely surprised i was told that he was trying to come up with a reason of why nk would have heard of them prior to her employment and all he could come up with for a guess was that, and these are his words, Shanann was very well known through Thrive and her public posts. And before I go into this next part, keep this in mind. I was also told that Chris seems very much in love with NK still, and he's still struggling with aspects of that, but there's really not much there as far as emotion or remorse as far as Shanann. In fact, he told this person that the one-year anniversary in August was the first time that he had cried for Shanann. So my point is we don't know where his motivations are still and where his head's at since he still has feelings for her. However, when asked about the morning of the murders, he allegedly said that he was, it was, these are his words, it was just me alone. When asked to expand on that or asked about, you know, planning or conversations before that or anything afterwards, he refused to answer. Something happened the weekend at the Sand Dunes. If you'll remember, that was July 28th and 29th. I was told that he said, these are his words, that that weekend was the beginning of the end for him. I don't know what exactly happened at this point, but I know that he marks that as a very significant weekend in relation to the murders. And I was also told that he allegedly had an incredibly difficult time getting through that anniversary. Hopefully we'll get some more information and I do appreciate this person talking to us. We aren't going to stop digging because we do believe 100% that there is more to the story. We do have a theory on these two weekends and why they were so significant and what we think happened. The sand dunes and the date at Lazy Dog. However, we will need to check on some things before we put it out there. So let's talk about the oxygen special. It was done a little differently from investigators' perspective, and it was very emotional to see how much it affected the investigators. They didn't mention NK much, as we suspected would be the case, but we did pull out a couple quotes that we thought were important. The first comment was when DA Rourke was talking about when they first found out that Chris had a girlfriend. And he says that they were surprised to find out he had a girlfriend and that he had been in this relationship for, quote, a while. The other comment that caught my attention was when Agent Tammy Lee said that they used Ronnie to get a confession out of Chris and how important that was because it's not uncommon for it to take two to three years to build a case against their defendant. It's just something to keep in mind for those who say that if there was anyone else involved, they would be arrested by now. There were some people talking about Kirby Lewis's statement. And if you don't know who Kirby Lewis is, he was not in Discovery. He is the agent in charge at CBI. 
He didn't have a huge role in the special, but he did make a statement. And the statement was, after investigating, we were confident that she had no role in this tragic event. So the people that were bringing this statement up were saying, okay, look, the CBI cleared NK. So of course we brought this up in our circle today and talked about it in our group. And I guess everyone's looking for their confirmation bias, but that is not our interpretation. For a point of reference, at this point in the documentary, Kirby Lewis is talking about when they first found out that Chris had a girlfriend. He says, as soon as they heard her name, she called in and said, I am the other woman. However, that's not quite true compared to the discovery. I'm not saying he's lying. I'm just saying it's just not quite accurate. We see in discovery that on Tuesday, they had people at her home expecting that Chris may show up there. So they knew about her before she called. So when he says, after investigating, we were confident, what investigation? Is he referring to the one that both DA Rourke and Tammy Lee said stopped dead in its tracks in November? Please remember that at one time, they were also, quote unquote, confident that the girls didn't leave the house alive. Right up until one of us YouTubers that don't know anything found the shadow and brought it to their attention. And then the next thing you know, they're going up to see Chris in Wisconsin and there's a second confession. And the other thing is, for all the talk that there was from some people about Kirby Lewis's statement, I didn't hear a lot about Agent Tammy Lee's statement. So I want to take a minute to go over that. During the documentary, Tammy is telling them how after Chris's arrest, they were gearing up for a murder trial that was going to take years when she got a call from Detective Baumhover saying that Chris was going to plead guilty. And she gets very emotional when she's talking about this. I would love to play Tammy's statement for you so you could hear it in her voice because it's much more powerful, but I can't for copyright reasons, so I'm just going to read it to you. So after she gets the call from Detective Baumhover, Tammy then says, and I quote, whoa, wait, like we're not done. We have all of these things to do. We didn't examine all the evidence. We didn't interview every witness we needed to. We didn't do all of these things that you do in a normal investigation because he stopped the clock. We were relieved that it was going to be over, but at the same time, we felt like in a sense, we didn't finish. I think her choice of words is very telling. It's the same thing we've been saying in our series. It feels unfinished. So clearly we're not the only ones that feel this way. You just heard the same thing from one of the lead investigators. So do we think Kirby Lewis's statement means the CBI cleared her? No, absolutely not. The CBI is not going to go on oxygen to clear someone on a huge case like this. Not only that, but we aren't going to know if they are or aren't investigating her. And they're certainly not going to go on a TV show to verify it. If anything, hearing what Tammy Lee had to say, in our opinion, just validated what we've been saying here and how we've been feeling this entire time as well. So let's just talk about first for a minute. We know that NK was angry and resentful for missing out on all these firsts with Chris. Chris reassures her about it in the card. She complains about it to Charlotte. And she's just spent the past five interviews that we've listened to obsessing about her employment, her image, the media, contacts on her phone. She refused to say the name Shanam, Bella, Celeste, and Nico unless forced. We listened to her carry on with investigators and a completely inappropriate callous, detached, um, sometimes flirty manner, while four people have been brutally murdered. But most importantly, we listen to her openly and admittedly conceal information, evade details, and flat out lie numerous times about potentially crucial information regarding this investigation. And through all of this, we never hear her express sympathy or ask how the Rusiks are doing, or ask how anyone's doing. It's just all about her. And she fails to realize the first that are actually important. What about the first time Shanann was going to get to lay her eyes on her new baby boy? Or the first time that she got to see the girls go to elementary school, or go to a girl-boy dance, or drive a car? And what about the girls first that they'll never get to experience? They'll never get to graduate from high school or go to college or get married 
or have little babies of their own. Those are the first that matter, and those are the ones that can't be forgotten about. Good job. High five. High five, baby.